Are you fired up now? We want to thank the band. They get us fired up every Sunday, too. We appreciate them. I had to... Uh, Terry sent me this song this week, and it got me fired up right in the middle of the week. And I said, you know, this is the basis of a, a good sermon. So uh, thank you, Lord. We need to thank the Lord for everything. Thank you for this building so we can be here this morning. Amen. And praise to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the rain. In the middle of August, in the end of August, we're getting rain early. So thank you for that also. Say it with me this morning. Thank you, Lord. There you go. You know, giving thanks comes natural to some, and it comes unnatural to many. If you have a heart full of Jesus Christ, then being thankful comes naturally. Amen? Romans chapter 1, verse 21. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him, but their thinking became futile. And their foolish hearts were darkened. Sometimes we find ourselves that when God does things for us, we don't appreciate it at all. We forget to thank God in it. I read a story. An old farmer was a local church-going Christian and was spending the day in a large city. He entered a restaurant and sat down at the table near a group of men from the city. When his meal was brought to the table, the farmer quietly bowed his head and said, Grace. One of the smart aleck young men thought he would have some fun mocking the old farmer. He said in a loud voice where everybody in the restaurant could hear, Hey, old farmer, does everyone do that stuff where you come from? And the crowd laughed out loud. The old farmer looked at the young critic and simply replied with a grin, No, son, the pigs don't. (laughs) Amen. Can you find yourself... Thankful this morning, no matter what. In every situation, can we be thankful? It's tough sometimes, because sometimes we don't want to be thankful. We think, why is all this being piled on us, or why is it being poured on us? But in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19, we're going to start there this morning, if you join me. Once again, I pray you have your Bibles with you, that you can open them, look at God's words, not mine. Ephesians chapter 5, beginning at verse 19. Ephesians chapter 5, beginning at verse 19, says, Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And these words, these words right here came from a man who had learned the meaning of true thankfulness. Even in the midst of great adversity, the Apostle Paul wrote these words while in prison in Rome through all he was going through. And Paul's thankfulness wasn't just a once in a year celebration, but a daily reality that changed his life. And it made him a joyful person in every situation. It reflects that he was a joy to be around because he was thankful in every situation he found himself in. And giving thanks to the Lord should not be just a daily thing. I'm sorry, it should be a daily thing. I said that wrong. Not just every once in a while thing. Had that backwards. Oh, it's the glasses, I know. You know, thankfulness is a distinctive trait of a believer in Jesus Christ. It's hard not to be thankful when you have a Lord in your heart. And we must never, ever allow the devil to plant seeds of ingratitude into our hearts. And that can be done very easily in today's society. Allowing this could harden our hearts and damage our relationship with God and others if we allow that to go on. And remember those words. And many times we mention this. It's all we always say, allow. It's our choice. We can allow that stuff into our minds and into our hearts, or we can not allow it in there. And sometimes when we're in that low pit, when we're in despair, uh, despair and we're depressed and all that, we're, we open it up. For Satan to plant that kind of stuff in our minds and in our hearts. We find ourselves weak. But the Bible tells us to stand firm. And be strong in the Lord. Amen? From one end of the Bible to the other. We are commanded to be thankful. 
all through the Bible. We are commanded to be thankful. Remember recently, uh, uh, we heard a message on contentment. I, I spoke about contentment and where we spoke about never being satisfied with what we have. But what a difference it'll make to us when we realize that everything we have has been given to us from God. Do we ever see it that way? Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we think we, we made it happen. We, we earned it, and we probably go out and earn and do. That's great. But God provided it for us to be able to do that. And sometimes we lose sight of that. Listen to these words in First Chronicle that were prayed by King David. First Chronicles chapter 29, uh, beginning at verse 12. These words came, these, these words were prayed by King David. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 12. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as gener generously as this? Everything comes from you. And we have given you only what comes from your hand. Giving back, amen? They recognize very quickly that they need to be thankful in all things because of God provided it all. Nothing turns us into bitter, selfish, dissatisfied people more quickly than an ungrateful heart. Know anybody like that? Ungrateful heart. They're not thankful for anything. There's people out there that way. And you run into them all the time. On the other hand, nothing will do more to restore contentment and joy of our salvation than the true, true spirit of thankfulness. Thankfulness brings joy into our hearts just like it would someone else. We should be thankful for the taxes we pay. Y'all go, wait a minute. <laughs> because it means we're employed. Amen? Amen? The clothes that fit a little too snug because it means we have enough to eat. The lawn that needs mowing, a roof that needs repairing, or the windows that need cleaning because it means we have a home. The spot we find at the far end of the parking lot at Walmart because it means we're capable of walking. The lady or man behind us in church who sings off key don't look behind you. Don't do that. <laughs> because it means we can hear. Amen. The alarm that goes off early in the morning hours. Because it means we are alive. The art of thankfulness is the gratitude in action, right? Do we ever look at it that way? No, not always. We can be thankful for everything if we just try. How do you be thankful for mosquitoes? You ever thought about that? I hadn't figured that one out yet, but I'm trying. <laughs> I'm thankful for the spray that keeps them off of me. How about that? <laughs> it's so easy today to take people for granted or even complain and become angry because they don't meet our every wish. You know, we can get angry and not want to be thankful there. The fact is we should be thankful for those around us, like our spouses, our children, our grandchildren, our relatives, well, maybe not all of them, but our relatives, our friends, and the others that God has put in our path. We should be thankful for them. God created them also. And sometimes he puts them in our path for a reason. And we should be thankful for that, even if it's a trial from time to time. Do we continually let others that, do we let them know that we appreciate them and we're thankful for them? Do you ever tell your kids, your family, your spouse, do you ever tell these people that you're thankful and you really appreciate them? Sometimes we forget because we get comfortable with one another. And we take them for granted. I would say we wouldn't want to do that. It's better to thank them now than to regret it later. Amen? You know, in the ancient world, 
Leprosy was a horrible disease. It hopelessly defigured those who had it. It was a bad thing. And it permanently cut them off from being part of a normal society. A person in that day that had leprosy, they couldn't be around anybody. They were in their own group. They couldn't be part of any normal society at all. It was a fact that every leper hoped for one thing, to be healed. That was their hope. So let's go to Luke chapter 17, beginning at verse 11, if you join me there. Luke chapter 17, beginning at verse 11. So now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going to a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. The one out of ten, the one came back, had been healed. He had a heart of thankfulness and a heart for Jesus Christ. Out of the ten lepers, though, it tells us only one was healed. You go, wait a minute, wait a minute, that's not true. He healed, he healed all nine, all ten of them. No, he didn't. He cured all ten of them, but only one got healed. You've probably never looked at it that way, but they were all given a gift a new of a new life. Every one of them was given a gift of a new life right there. They all are cured, but only one is healed. Only one of the ten lepers returned to give thanks, and this is the one that is not only cured, but the one that was healed. So how does that work? The question here is there... No difference between the one leopard who comes back and the other nine who just went on their merry way. Is there no difference? They were all, they were all cured. There is a difference. And that's what I'm trying to point out to you this morning. When Jesus said to the Samaritan leper, your faith has made you well, he means that here is where the real healing took place. Because he knew who cured him. And it's not just the leper's body that is cured, but also his whole life and his soul. Because it reached past of the physical of what he looked like. This one leopard had been reached down into his heart. Jesus had reached deeper than just the outer surface with him. Because he got it. That's why it says he was healed. So when he comes back, he's not only cured, but healed. Because he knows he has been cured. And from who his cure came from, Jesus Christ. There is a difference. And he appreciated it. And he was thankful for it. At that point, he knew who the Savior was. The other nine, they were excited about being cured. You can bet on that. They didn't appreciate who cured them. Being free of his affliction has taught him a deeper lesson in this whole thing that he went through and given him eyes to see the source of his wholeness as a person right then. He knew it wasn't going to be done by anyone else and it couldn't be done by anyone else. And he didn't come back just because he had a sense of duty or obligation at that time. He comes back because of a thankful heart. 
he comes back just to say, thank you, Jesus. Nothing more than that. That's all he had to say. Which to Jesus was really quite enough. That's all he needed to hear. That's what happens in our lives. Sometimes there's so many things going on in our lives. From our health to finances to problems in our lives. Lord helps us out of that. I've even seen the Lord heal people that say, they say they can't be healed. And the people are really excited about that. I've run into people like that. They're really excited. Hey, God put my cancer in remission. Or God gave me more time to live than what the doctors are telling me. And they get really excited about that. And then just a short time later, they forgot who brought them to the dance. Amen. That's probably a, not a way to say it, but that's the way I see it. They forgot. Should they be thankful immediately for that healing? Amen. But should they forget and not be thankful every day for that healing? No. Because it's not a one-time thing. We have to find ourselves healed deeper than just a cure. We need to find ourselves where Jesus Christ is just full in our hearts. That we don't hesitate to say thank you in all things. You know, sometimes it's hard. Even in, when the trials come in our lives, we don't want to say thank you. We just kind of want to be angry about it, complain about it. Trials make us stronger. The Bible's real clear about that. Without those trials, we might not grow as strong as we are. As Christians. And the Bible commands. Give thanks. In all circumstances. It's not my words. It's in the book. First Thessalonians. Chapter 5. Verse 16. Let's look at it together. Once again, Paul speaking, and Paul's in the midst of a lot of things when it came to the Bible. Some of you may not know who Paul is. Paul was Saul. He was going all through the country. He'd been given the right to persecute Christians. He went through the country doing it. He was not a good guy. Jesus had enough of him one day and struck him down on the road to Damascus, blinded him. Said, no longer will you be a bad guy. And after a little suffering with blindness, his blindness was healed and he started serving the Lord. And he became one of the most powerful influences for the Christian right that ever walked the earth next to Jesus Christ. But he continued through everything he went through. And if you read in the Bible and you read about Paul, he went through a lot. I mean, he's been in prison. He's taken beatings. He's been shipwrecked. He's, he's been through it all. But yet he can still find thankfulness in his heart for Jesus Christ. For everything. So First Thessalonians, Paul speaking here, rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. If Paul can do it, then we should simply be able to do it. Amen. In today's world, people will tell you that you don't get something for nothing. Basically, it comes down to you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Ever heard that? And these words reflect what it's like in the real world. It's the give and take required to get along nowadays. This is why so many people feel they have to bargain with God. You know, instead of calling on him in prayer and letting him know 
what it is you have going on in your life and he already knows your needs. You might be sharing your wants, but he already knows. So we tend to bargain with him. Hey, Lord, you do this for me, I'll do this for you. You know, I'll start going to church more. I'll pray a little more. I'll give a little more. God's not going to bargain with you. His way or the highway. Right? It's the way it is. God's not going to strike a bargain with any of us. God will give whatever God wishes to give. He's already given us this creation, amen? Our lives, our talents, our many blessings, His love, grace, forgiveness, mercy, and support with no strings attached. He gives us all that. And actually requires nothing in return. It's up to us to make a choice to return that to Jesus Christ by accepting Him as our Lord and Savior. So we have a choice. God loves the unsaved just like He loves the saved. Some people would argue with you on that. But He does. And He hopes that we make the choice. He's not going to make us make that choice. That wouldn't be right. And we're not loving him for the right reasons, amen? But he gives us a choice to accept him as our Lord and Savior. And he gives us a choice to be thankful. We can choose to be or not choose to be. I find that thankful people have a lot of joy in their lives because they appreciate everything. I'm sure you've run into many people like that. And I've run into many people that have a little joy in their lives. And they're not thankful for anything. All they do is complain. Complain and drama. That's the world today. If there's not any drama, then we're going to complain because there's not any drama, right? Are we thanking God for all this stuff that he's given us? It's a wonderful thing to say, thank you, Lord. That's a wonderful thing to come out of anyone's mouth. Thank you, Lord. But there are other ways to thank the Lord also. Sometimes we miss. Just like we did this morning. With the band, with the video. By worshiping the Lord through songs and praises. That's one way to say thank you, Lord. By giving cheerfully and generously to God and to others. Giving. It's a way to say thank you. And by serving in the church. Being fully involved. And by sharing the gospel of Jesus to others. Is that not saying thank you Lord? So there are other ways to do it also. I think when you get up in the morning that should be the first thing we say. Thank you Lord. I know what the devil says about my wife. Oh no, she's up. It's going to be a bad day. We should be more thankful. Learn to appreciate things more. Even if we have a little, appreciate what we do have. If you have a lot, give generously and be thankful that you're capable of doing that. There are people here in this church that does that every day. They give and don't expect anything in return. And they're thankful that God put them in the position to do that. I just watched on, uh, now it's called Country Reporter, Texas Country Reporter, if any of you have ever watched that. And uh, Bob Phillips, we watched a uh, story about the gentleman down in Houston. When all the floods came in in Houston and everybody was flooded, this gentleman had a furniture store. Some of you may remember reading this story. And he opened up his furniture store to let anyone, didn't matter who it was, anyone in to have a place to rest and get warm and be comfortable. 
And he took them all in. And not only did he take them all in, they were laying all over his furniture, all over his mattresses. They made a home in this place. And not only did he do that, but he opened up his little uh, snack bar and he fed them all. Continually to do that. And God just blessed him. And kept blessing him. He's a good Christian guy. And I guess God blessed him in so much from what he did, he decided that he would start a school to help people in trades. A trade school right there. He moved a lot of furniture out of the way in this building and built on to build a trade school in his furniture store so everybody can get an education and learn a trade. For free. No charge at all. And he's also going to feed them three times a day for free. And help them move forward in their lives. And what was so great is he made the statement, who God gives plenty to, they should return that. And that's what he was doing. He said, God gave him much, so it's up to him to give it out. And that's exactly what he's doing. Now, we may not own a furniture store and we may not be millionaires, but the little bit we have, we should be willing to give up for someone else in need in some way. And if you don't have a lot to give, you do have the word of Jesus Christ. You do have the ability to lead others to know Jesus Christ. That's helpful immediately right there. And as it says, that's saying, thank you, Lord. I'm going to lead someone to know you and help you grow your kingdom. That's a thankfulness. So it's out there. You don't have to have a lot to be thankful. And you don't have to have a lot to be generous. There's so many of us in here that I see daily that you're reaching out to people. You're leading others to Christ. You're posting Bible scriptures instead of all the other old bull that comes on the internet. I like seeing that. And I don't get to see it much because I'm not on Facebook. You know why? Because I don't like drama. <laughs> so I don't get on Facebook. My wife shares with me when some of you screw up, though. <laughs> I pray for you. <laughs> no, we all screw up, don't we? Folks, what I'm trying to put across to you this morning, just like in the video, just like the praise music that our band brings and the awesome job they do, get excited. Get excited about the Lord. We come in here, we sit down, we hear the message, and we about to sleep. We can't wait to get, to get out and go get something to eat. I'm glad you don't eat before you come in. We would never do anything. We'd all be sleeping. I'd have to get loud, get my bullhorn out, wake everybody up and say, get excited for Jesus Christ. So can you this morning in all circumstances say, thank you, Lord. Well, let me hear it. Come on. Okay. That's what we need to do every day, every morning when we get up, every night before we go to bed. Thank you, Lord. What a great day. I know I might have broke my leg, but thank you, Lord. Now I don't have to work as hard, right? There's, there's something in everything. We just have to find it. And today I pray that as Christians, we are thanking God for everything in our daily lives. That God will see us not just cured of afflictions, but healed by our faith. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. We're going to close right here. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. 
Don't let Satan get in your mind and heart and bring in some ungratefulness in your life. Find thanks in everything. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we do come to you this morning thankful and humble. Father, for all the blessings you pour out here on your church house and your church family here. Father, we're thankful for your love, your grace, and your mercy you show upon us when we know we're not worthy of it. And Father, we're thankful that you loved us enough to send your son to die on the cross to cover our sins and shortcomings in our lives. Father, I do pray today that we all find thankful hearts in everything, even in the bad situations. Father, that we'll reflect back to you and look for the learning that you provide with us through everything you do. Father, I pray that our hearts are full, our faith is strong as a mustard seed, and that we lean on you for everything in our lives and appreciate what you do for us. Father, we love you. I pray today that everything we said, everything we did was uplifting, pleasing, and glorifying to you. We ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Folks, we're going to ask for your prayer today. There are a group of us that are leaving out next Saturday. We're going to Lake City, Colorado to ride up in the mountains. Well, we ask for your prayers while we're there to keep us all safe by the time we return. Thank you for being here this morning. Happy trails.